Hello everyone, welcome to Shindu.org. In this episode of Awesome August, we're going to talk about how to highlight overview items and tasks from a tracker or a list that you have built in Excel. Towards the end of this lesson, I'm going to show you something that is very cool, built with conditional formatting and form controls so that you have finer control over the items that are highlighted. Just a brief introduction to the Awesome August. Awesome August is a festival that I'm running at Chandu.org where for each and every day of August, I'm going to publish a new piece of content. It could be a video, a text or a podcast that explains some aspect of Excel that makes you awesome in your day-to-day -day work. Okay, so let's head over to the example workbook for this particular video. If you want to download the workbook, uh, just head over to channel.org and grab the file. Alternatively, if you are watching this video on YouTube, just uh, YouTube or Facebook, uh, just look at the description of the video uh, and there is a link that you can use to download the file. So here is it uh, that uh, we have a, a tracker. Basically, trackers have this kind of a structure where we we have some sort of a running number it could be an id or a unique identifier and some sort of a task you know it could be anything i just made up these random tasks uh, that are usually assigned to somebody or some uh, some system or some project or whatever in this case we are assuming these are assigned to various employees and uh, in 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 general there would be a due date by which this particular task should, should be complete and whether we have completed it or not so a done status now the structure that you have here task assigned to due date and done this is a very very generic structure and it can be applied to many other kind of scenarios for example you could be looking at a bunch of invoices where the invoice id uh, who is the customer that we sent that invoice to, when is the invoice due and whether it is paid or not. You could be looking at uh, uh, individual projects, the project name, who is the manager, when is the project due for delivery and uh, what percentage of project is completed. You could be looking at risks, issues or to-do items, whatever may be the case. And they all usually follow this kind of a structure where an item is there along with a due date and whether it is completed or not and an optional column that tells the story of who is responsible for it okay so given this kind of a list in in many businesses especially uh, anywhere you are doing some sort of a project or a bunch of people are getting together and doing things usually these kind of lists are prepared to keep track of various items uh, that need to complete and who is responsible for them and how much progress has been done on them and when you have a list like this, one of the primary things that we often focus, especially as a manager or as a senior analyst, would be to know out of all the things that you see here, which are not completed, what is it that is pending so that you could focus your attention, energy on those pending items. But how do you nail down the pending items? One option could be you could, uh, you could filter this list so that all the done items are gone, only unfinished items are remaining. And then you can sort this by, by due date so that anything that is that needs to be completed immediately, today or tomorrow, will be on the top and anything that is due maybe three weeks from today will be further down the list. Okay, But that is a lot of manual work, right? Every time you have to analyze this, you need to sort and filter, which can take a couple of minutes and then uh, what if you have to add data? Usually when you want to add data, you need to restore the sort order and uh, restore it to the ID and then type new information at the bottom. And you know, it could be you, it could be somebody else doing all of that. So all of this could be a lot of extra steps. So I'm going to show you some techniques that involve using a feature called conditional formatting, uh, which will help us quickly highlight maybe in some bright yellow color all the pending tasks so you just click a button and it will highlight so i'm going to show you something very very simple to start with then we will build the complexity the simplest solution would be you could select the due date column only the due date column you cannot select other columns and then go to conditional formatting highlight and then say date occurring okay excel has built a lot of predefined rules 
around date columns so that's why i said you must select the date column if you select employee id or task then it wouldn't serve the purpose because they're not date columns so this column is essentially date so excel gives you an option what do you want to highlight do you want to highlight all the things that are on yesterday today or tomorrow or in the last seven days last week this week next week so on and so forth so let's highlight all the items that are there for this week everything gets highlighted usually in the default formatting of pink colored shading uh, but you can customize it and anything that is in pink color is is something that you need to focus and deliver this week okay right now the the, the definition of this week is relative that means today today is uh, you can see that today is uh, 31st of july on which i'm recording this video so with respect to today uh, this week would be the monday that that is uh, uh, on 26th i believe and then ending of this week which will happen on again a lot of things vary here uh, but i would imagine the end of week would be saturday so first of august would be my my end of week so that would be the definition of the week and within that definition all the items will be highlighted uh, and you can change the rules you can choose next week or next month so on and so forth but this is a very very cumbersome method and the other aspect with this problem this method is that when you when you highlight the dates your highlighting is done in this column usually we need the information in the date column and we would like to highlight the task right because that's what you need to get it get done so you need to look at all the pink ones scroll in your eye you need to go like this and read that that thing and maybe call up that employee and figure out why it is uh, why she has not completed the task okay so that is the first problem with the, this approach the highlighting is done in the wrong place ideally we would love to highlight the task or even better highlight the entire row so that's uh, that's what we would love to do that's the first problem the second problem is this particular highlighting uh, pays no respect whatsoever to whether we have completed the task or not what if a particular task is done right if i type done in a cell uh, ideally i don't need to highlight this anymore because it's completed it's done and dusted there is no need to highlight that one but that doesn't matter for this conditional formatting rule it doesn't care about what is is there in other columns so the simplest approach which is to select a date column and specify a rule around today's date uh, so is it um, in the last week or next week or next seven days or last one month is just for people who need to get started but it may not be enough for uh, those of you who need to do more and and focus more attention on highlighting the entire thing so that you you can actually figure out what is going on so i'm going to show you that technique as well i will leave the pink highlighting on just so you can compare things so ideally what we want to highlight is um, we would like to highlight all the items that are that are unfinished and due in the next 7 days okay so the definition that we are going with is unfinished due in next seven days okay just so we we have some clarity what these next seven days that i speak of next seven days with would start with today obviously and then they end on oops they end on so they start on 31st of july and they end on 6th of august now these formulas are relative by that what i mean is by the time you are watching this video probably on chandu.org or youtube or facebook or whatever uh, you know it could be 10th of august or 3rd of august whatever that date is relative to that date these next 7 days will be calculated so you are always focusing on future and you are not worried about uh, some historical dates okay so these are, are dynamic and they change as and when you reopen the file or save it or refresh the calculations okay so given these two pieces of information i'm just going to set up some borders around them and maybe uh, fill up some color in them so we know these are the dates that tell us what needs to be highlighted and then i'm going to select the entire table 
and we'll go to conditional format new rule the rule that we need to specify would be I want to check my date column against those two cells start and end dates that I have specified and work with that so because this is not a default rule we must come up with a formula to tell conditional formatting how to do this we will select use a formula to determine which cells to format option the formula would be we need to ask Excel if my due date that is in, in, in column E of the table we look at this column E of the table is between start and end dates here okay if so and if it's not completed so column E must be between the start and end values and column F must be empty that is it should not be done so there are two conditions so we will write and the first condition is um, this is between those two unfortunately there is no between formula in Excel so we need to come up with something that works with the limitations I'm going to show you one variation you can come up with your own options uh, depending on what you are comfortable with I'm going to show you the option that I usually rely on so I select the value in column E now when you select that usually it writes in in absolute references so that means whenever the conditional formatting is applied no matter which row is getting checked it will always check my E5 cell we don't want that we just want the checking to happen on column E but 5 should become 6, 7, 20 so on and so forth as we check further down so we need to have this not as dollar $E, dollar $5 but simply E5 you can press F4 key a couple of times until the referencing style changes so my E5 is equal to median of dollar e5 and then these two dates okay you can point to those two dates or you can alternatively write them here so today and then today plus six okay so is is the date in in column e between today and six days from today so is it in the next seven days or not so that's the first condition the second condition is is the value in column F not done okay so is it not equal to done I'm saying not equal to instead of simply writing is it empty or something because you may want to write something like not done or in progress or whatever there so in which case we still want to highlight it as long as it is not done we want to highlight it so that is the condition it is a formula that is basically going to return true or false so whenever you write a formula inside conditional formatting it must return either true or false only then the conditional formatting will accept that formula and work with it so here we are using the boolean formula and and it is basically checking two conditions is this item undone or unfinished and is it due for due within the next seven days so we set it up and then we apply formatting condition uh, let's go with something nice and bright like that we want to highlight all the pending items in the next seven days in that uh, bright yellow color and then click OK and apply and close so we will see that these are the items that are due in the next seven days if you were to mark any one of them as done instantly the highlighting will be gone so even if it is due next week if it is completed it won't be highlighted anymore I'm going to undo the steps so there are these couple of techniques one is to use the default rules on the date column the other is to set up a formula that goes a little beyond the default rules and gives you control over how you want to highlight and what kind of conditions you want to set up if you want to focus more on highlighting the due items for the next 14 days or next one month or next six months all you got to do is change the formula wherever we are writing today plus six uh, the six would become 13 or 30 or 180 or 365 or whatever you fancy likewise if you want to go back in time you want to see whether uh, any of the items from last one month are still pending you could modify the formula so you would say today minus 30 will go back or you could use the e date formula and travel in months now that we have seen something that is interesting and powerful I'm going to show you something that is even more powerful and awesome are you ready for it so here is my highlight options sheet 
uh, when you download you will be able to examine everything in this I'm not going to explain everything I'm just going to demonstrate it so that you can uh, you can tinker with this file and learn it on your own so here is a file that gives you a lot more flexibility uh, you can specify what kind of highlighting you want to do do you want to highlight items during next seven days or 14 days or last seven days so you can specify that and what kind of items do you want to highlight everything or not finished or just completed items so depending on the focus of analysis or reporting or or intention of the users they can choose whatever they want and based on that the conditional formatting will react and and change the formulas if you are not satisfied with those options you can even specify a custom date range in which case your input dates will go here so you could type here for example something like show me everything in July so you can say 1 July 2015 and then 31 July 2015 and then everything in July that is not finished will be highlighted so that you could you could examine them so this is something where we mix conditional formatting with form controls and come up with interesting formulas that can handle these kind of dynamic what if kind of scenarios and give you or your audience a lot of fine control over what they want to see in the report what they want to uh, focus their attention on and what they want to worry about so there you go how to highlight overview items i hope you enjoyed this particular video in the awesome august if you want to learn more please click on the blue button in your workbook that will take you to the awesome august page where other items in the awesome august series are mentioned Likewise, I just want to mention that if you are liking this video, I'm sure you will love my Excel School online training program where we talk about all these aspects in lot of detail, not just about conditional formatting and form controls and formulas, but about charts, about pivot tables, about tables, about various advanced formula combinations, about creating dashboard reports that are mind-bogglingly cool and awesome. So go to chandu.org and uh, explore our Excel School program and give it a thought. It might change your career or open up lots of new doors for you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll catch up with you in the next one. Bye-bye.